The world is changing. Inspiration is everywhere. It has never been so easy to connect, share, and bring people together. We're learning from others and finding the best in ourselves. Challenging our beliefs. Sharing our vulnerability. Overcoming our fears. Transforming ourselves so we can transform the world. How far can we go? This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is... This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is Robert Kiyosaki, the entrepreneur, educator, and investor, best known as the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the number one personal finance book of all time. Right now, the world is gripped by the COVID-19 pandemic and global lockdown, with over 2 billion people confined to their homes in order to stop the deadly coronavirus from spreading. A worldwide recession is all but certain, with unemployment at all-time highs and stock markets down 25%. Robert, you have challenged the way tens of millions of people around the world think about money, and you have become a passionate and outspoken advocate for financial education. For years, you've been warning us about the next crash, and now your insight on how we can protect ourselves is more crucial than ever before. Robert, I'm so glad we could do this. Welcome back to London Real. Brian, thank you. Thank you again. I really appreciate what you do, so thank you. <laughs> well, we've been having some really interesting conversations lately, you know, just to bring people up to speed. We're at nearly a million people infected worldwide. And you know me, Robert, I came for the hard talk today, not the happy talk, and that's you. Uh, you know, less than a year ago, you were sitting here in the studio blowing up a balloon and popping it with a pin and talking about this upcoming crash and how we pre prepare for it. Now it's happening. I would love to get into what you're seeing also through all of your tens of years of experience. But first off, maybe we talk about the virus itself right now because you're kind of the target market for this thing, and yet you see so much more that this virus has implications for. Is that right? Absolutely. This coronavirus um, is bigger than 9-11 or Pearl Harbor or anything we've ever seen before. And on the biggest picture of all, the coronavirus and the coming crash, financial collapse possibly, marks the end of the industrial age and the beginning of the information age. It's a very big move. And the people that are in trouble today are people still stuck in industrial age thoughts. And let me give you an example. The reason London Rail and Brian Rose is doing so well is you guys moved on. I moved on. Rich Dad moved on years ago. The people that are having a hard time are called BBC, NBC, CBS, because they're still industrial age and they're gonna get crushed. So I'm, that's why I'm very happy to talk to you. I'm gonna love your program. I love your guest because we've moved on. The people that are struggling financially haven't moved on yet. So that's my, that is my message, that is your message. It's time to move on. So being target market for coronavirus. Look, let me give you my health problems here. You know, I've had pneumonia three times. I've had malaria. I've had open heart surgery. I've had cancer. Now that's the bad news. You know what the good news is? I'm aware I had to become healthier. I don't want the, I don't want some vaccine to protect me. It's my responsibility to protect myself. And that's what you do with all your running and things like this. So that's all it is to me. Now, if you're in trouble today, my message is not so kind. This is hard talk, not happy talk. The crisis is in your head. Now that's the bad news. <laughs> the good news, you can change the crisis by changing what's inside your head. And so I'm doing, I hate to brag, but I'm doing extremely well financially today because as I was warning everybody, this crisis was coming. But it would, be, it would be irresponsible of me to warn people of the crisis and not personally make changes myself. So right. the good news is the crisis is in your head. 
the bad news, it's in your head. <laughs> <laughs> now, you say the crisis is in your head. I mean, Robert, is that because it's about fear and your relationship with fear and also this old thinking versus new thinking? Because like you said, I mean, my business has been digitized for years. As a matter of fact, in my academy, as you know, I teach students how to digitize their intellectual property to survive things like this. So again, like, you know, uh, we, we have already made that transition that you really put, pointed out well into that information age. But what do you mean by the crisis in their head? Because most people will react very strangely to that statement. <laughs> They'll say, no, Robert, it's out there. And it's this little virus that's moving around and infecting and killing people. But that's not the way you see it. Well, the virus is real. The question is, how healthy are you? So I could, I could be a victim right now saying, you know, I have heart disease, diabetes, I'm overweight. Uh, I've had pneumonia three times. I've had malaria. And all that did was inspire me to be healthier. And so let me give you my definition of health. Health is mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, and then physical health. So I spend a lot of money and time on my mental health, my emotional health, my spiritual health, and my physical health. And the average person goes to their doctor once a year for an annual checkup. That's not health, that's called medicine. So the, this is my biggest complaint is that who determines our medicine is the insurance companies, some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. So the average person, because they have no wealth, can't afford my health care. They can't afford my, you know, the, the physician I see is 5,000 a visit. And if you have health insurance, they won't see you. So that's health care and wealth care. So if you're still thinking your physician is going to save you, that's all thinking. If you think that you spiritually can do what you don't like, that's all thinking, you know, in job security and all that's all thinking. If you think you can just, you know, I mean, I, you know, if, if physical exercise for you is shopping, you're out of luck. <laughs> and mental health is crucial. I mean, what thoughts do you have in your head? If you think this is a bad time, guess what? You're right, it's bad. But if you think this is the possibly the best time for you, you can move forward. So this is a, a big wake up call that we can use to our advantage. And some people could really use this as a vehicle to change, like you said, not just their wealth, their health, their mental habits, all of that, if they choose to engage in it that way. You said uh, to me earlier that this could be one of a, a great moment for us as a society, as humanity, if we choose to use it in the right way. Let, let, let me say it again, Brian, because I don't think people hear it. You've already moved on. You and I have very similar backgrounds as far as the financial industry. But it doesn't mean we can't be in this business also. So you moved on. I was just with a friend of mine. He owns a company. He is a CEO of a company called NBC Universal, you know, a little big company here. And he and I spent a week together talking. And he says, We're in, he says, NBC is in serious trouble. But Brian Rose and Real Vision is the future. And if you can understand that, you're looking to so those of you at home right now who are sitting going, but I'm going to lose my job, my house, my pension and all this. It's because you're, you're trapped with all thoughts. And as most people know, is that, you know, when I came up with Rich Dad Poor Dad about 20 something years ago, mainstream media crucified me. You know, they said, Rich Dad Poor Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I said, the rich don't work for money. Savers are losers. Your house is not an asset. And I was crucified, just crucified. And the good news is, you know, as several of your guests have said, the most, most important thing you can have right now is not job security, but meaningful work. So you and I don't need the money, but our work is meaningful. And it's our meaningful work that gets us through the hard times. So the good news is my company is sold out. We cannot keep up with product. The bad news is the supply chain shut down. But that's a good problem. We have tons of cash. I have gold. I have silver. And I do have challenges in the real estate market. But that's going to make me stronger. 
That's my only attitude I can have. Otherwise, I just cry and say, well, the government should take care of me. I need a bailout. I need a stimulus. And Brian, you and I know stimulus means welfare for the rich. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about that because you put out some great tweets saying that the stimulus package was, like you said, socialism for the rich. Uh, you know, when I saw the announcements being made in the UK as well, Robert, talking about these massive checks being written, guaranteeing people's salaries. Uh, obviously, we saw the $2 trillion to $6 trillion package in America. The first thing I think is, who's paying for this? That's what I see right away. Whereas everyone else says, oh, I guess I'm okay and everything's going to be okay. T tell us what's really happening behind these packages. Well, may I go back in history a little bit of time to explain my, what do you call that, process? Please. So it was back in 81, I studied with this man, this book, um, Dr. R. Buckminster Fuller. He's probably the most famous genius very few people have heard of. He, was, he created the geodesic dome that was the U.S. pavilion at Expo 67, the World's Fair in the future. So Fuller was a futurist. So I studied with him for three times. And then when he passed away in 83, he published this book here, The Grunge of Giants. And again, you and I line up because Grunge of Giants is about what you and I know. You and I have seen inside the machine called Wall Street, the Fed, and all these guys. And once you look inside that, you go, oh, my God. So Grunge of Giants, which came out in 83, was kind of my wake-up call. But I've talked about it on your program. It gave my life meaning. You know, I mean, as I said on your program last time, I said, what does God want done? It's not that what does Robert Kiyosaki love doing? What does God want done? And I ask your viewers right now, what does God want done? If you're worried about your job, and I understand can't pay the rent, I understand. Can't feed the kids, I understand. But right now, the question is, that's all thinking. What's new? And the question is, what does God want done? So Brian Rose and London Real is doing what God wants done. NBC Universal isn't. BBC isn't. So you're going to do extremely well. I'm doing extremely well because we have meaningful work. And it's that spiritual health that gets us through physical health and financial health. So Grunge of Giants was gross, universal, cash heist. In other words, how are our lives and health and wealth stolen via the money we work for, specifically the US dollar and the British pound. So that's what Fuller talked about. So you and I are simpatico there because we both moved on. We're both kind of from the same backgrounds. You're from inside the machine. I was outside the machine looking at it. Then I, so once I had that, that was 83, then I wrote this book here in 1997, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now I didn't write the book and I created my cash flow board game, but I had to write this book here because when I, when Fuller asked me and he said, what does God want done? I had to step back and look at back my background. You know, what do I know? You know, for me to be a brain surgeon today or a coronavirus doctor, out of the question. Well, what did I know back in 83 was we had no financial education in our schools. Why? And my poor dad was a PhD. And the problem with PhDs and academics, as you know, they hide behind this piece of paper called a diploma. It doesn't mean they know anything. You know, so my poor dad and many of the academics running, you know, the Fed and the Treasury and our government are academics hiding behind diplomas, but they don't have a financial statement. You see, rich dad had a financial statement. My poor dad had a diploma. They're two different pieces of paper symbolizing two different states. So a diploma is BS. Mine stands for Bachelor of Science. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas a financial statement, as you know, on the corporate level, you cannot lie in a financial because that's fraud. So a financial statement, income expense, assets, liability, statement of cash flow, which is what Rich Dad Poor Dad's about. If you lie on that, you go to jail. So when I go to my banker and somebody says, well, I can't get a loan. The reason they can't get a loan is because they don't have a financial statement. Your financial statement is your report card. 99% of all kids, and that includes MBAs and all that, leave school not realizing the most important piece of paper is not their diploma, but a financial statement.
So you look at the richest people on earth today, they didn't graduate from school. Steve Jobs, what, uh, all those guys, you know, Henry Ford, Disney, they don't have college degrees. Uh, Branson from England. So the financial statement is for real. So that's all this was about. So what was my mission at that point? To bring financial education so simple that the average person could understand it. So I wrote this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was turned down by every publisher in 1997 saying you didn't know what you're talking about. I knew what I was talking about, but the academics don't. And that's the prime problem. They're running the Fed. They're running our government. This, I mean, these Larry Summers and all these guys, they're criminals because they think they're smart. They're ignorant. Right, and you posted something on uh, Instagram and Twitter talking about the Federal Reserve Bank saying that it's not a bank, it's not federal, and there are no reserves. And it was something created by a group of men in a, in a back office somewhere in 1910. And yet we kind of revere it as this all-knowing, all-powerful, I think you made the analogy of the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> where everyone just fears it and we say it's doing the right thing, but we don't really know what it's doing. Um, and when you start to look, as you said, behind the curtain, what was the analogy you made? It's a midget. <laughs> right. It's someone pulling strings. But when I talk, when I talk to young people, which drives the school teachers, I, I don't go back to schools anymore because I'm not politically correct. You know what I mean? Okay. So when I used that, to go that's to That's why school, we like you, Robert. <laughs> yeah. So I, I went back, to, you know, so when I would explain the fit to them, I said, well, just think of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. You know, there was the Tin Man. There was a straw man and there was a lion with no heart. And so they thought they could go see the wizard and the wizard would give them what they asked for. So they, they, they prance along the yellow brick road and they pull back the curtain and it's a midget back there, this big illusion. And that's, and, you know, that's Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen and this guy Powell. And before that was that other character, I forget his name already. But they, everybody thinks they're wizards, but they're controlled by Grunge, gross universal cash lease. Our wealth is stolen via the money we work for. I'm not recommending this book, but as I'm not a Buddhist either, but um, when I read Grunge of Giants, I had a, like, what they call a Satori mo moment. Satori means where your past, present, and future line up. You get the light, mm. you get it. I read this book and I understand what Fuller was saying. He says, you know, we're being ripped off. I went, oh my God. And then the question is, what does God want done? And for me, I'm not saying it to everybody else, what does God want done is we need financial education because the real problem of this crisis started back in 1904 when the richest guys on earth took over the education system of the United States. They formed a thing called the General Education Board. It was formed, formed by guys like Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. And what they pulled out of education was financial education. And so the reason they could rip us off, as you and I know, is via the mechanism of money. And that's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was a warning shot across the bow back in 1997. I said, wake up, something's coming down the road. So we're here right now. This is the biggest transformation in the history of the world. It's from industrial age to information age. Brian Rose is doing well because you made the transition. I'm doing well because I made the transition. I'm making more money than ever before. I have problems, but I'm making money, more money than ever before. But if you have it, if you're losing money right now, the, the problem starts in what you were taught in school. Because they never taught you anything about money. They never taught you about a financial statement, like my rich dad did. They teach you that diploma is everything. It's a piece of toilet paper. B.S. Right. That's and what you it buy, is. And you buy into that mechanism of money and you believe that that's, that is the only thing to focus on. And what you're saying right now with these stimulus packages is all of this money being given, quote unquote, away by the government to everybody is actually devaluing your dollar, it's devaluing your pension, it's devaluing your savings, and it's wiping out businesses. So it's, it's, you're dying by this sword. Yeah, and the harder you work for money, the poorer you're going to get. That's the tragedy. So, the, so this is how what Fuller talked about, the prison is inside our head, Buckminster Fuller. It starts with misinformation and misorientation. Misinformation, misorientation. And he says, how dare our schools punish kids for making mistakes? 
how else do you learn if you don't make a mistake and learn from your mistake? He says, God designed us. I'm not really religious. I'm not preaching here, okay? God designed us to learn by making mistakes. For instance, a baby learns to walk by falling down. Baby learns, you know, to ride a bicycle by falling off the bicycle. You know, Tiger Woods, the greatest golfer on ever in the history of the world, because <laughs> he made more mistakes than you and I did. But our schools punish you for making mistakes. That's misorientation, misinformation. And that's because our schools were basically built to create workers that will do what you tell them to do because they value this thing called money. And they think that's going to allow them to live a life. And that's obviously completely wrong because the rich don't work for money. The rich create their own wealth. And when a time like this happens, it becomes blatantly obvious what's going on with the people that are understanding money and the ones that aren't. Is that right? Amen, brother. <laughs> you see, the stimulus package is bailing me out. And I need to be bailed out. I mean, I have, so, you know, I have massive amounts of debt. So the first time in history, Brian, you know, I'm a more of a, I'm not a real estate guy, but I have a lot of real estate, is they're, bur they're, they're bailing out commercial real estate because that's what the rich really have. So you know, all these tall office buildings and shopping centers and all that, they're all collapsing right now. Now I'll give you a prediction that Fuller said when this is in 81. And I thought, God, Fuller, man, you're nuts. You know, he was like 80 something years old at the time. You're an old man, I'm almost old as he is now. But he said, all those beautiful office buildings, you know, in downtown and all that. He says, that's the best real estate in the world. And it's empty every, they're empty every night. They're empty right now. But he also said back in 80, 81, when I first studied with him, that those office buildings would be homeless shelters. Huh. I went, oh. and as a guy who has a lot of real estate, I said, oh my God, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. And then a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I was in Johannesburg, South Africa. And the best real estate in Johannesburg is now homeless people. And so you're saying these bailouts are helping the rich is what's happening here.